mean, this was half past seven, so you can tell what sort of reality. Oh, shocking. Well, I'm going to I don't remember leaving the place. I know I had my head on his shoulder. I forget he was holding my feet. And we got out the side. <laughs> and he said to me, he said, uh, would you like me to take him home in my motor car? So I said, listen, I said, I'm not getting into anything that moves tonight. Thank you very much. I said, I read in my magazine last week, my woman's thing, and it said in there that 57% of the people in this country are born through accidents. <laughs> and it's true, you know, all this. You might laugh at those women's magazines, but there's things in there even I didn't know. There's a whole page, mine, devoted to the stars and the occult, written by a gypsy fella, you know. He lives in a field with a horse, this chap. <laughs> he does. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's a mayor, he knows what he's doing, you know. <laughs> He's got this glass eye and a crystal ball, and he can tell. <laughs> he can tell what is going to happen to you before you've done it, you see. And then, uh, if you write to him, he gets you out of it. So, <laughs> these people write in. Now, a woman wrote in last week, and she signed herself worried. <laughs> And my gold shed needs to be in the <laughs> She said to him, she said, Dear Gypsy P, because that's what they call him. She said, I've been living with a fella for nine years and I've had 12 kids by him and he's now asked me to marry him. What should I do? <laughs> and she signed herself worried. I'd have been bloody petrified. Anyway... <laughs> Gypsy P wrote back underneath in italics, not in English, <laughs> and he said, Dear Worried, do not rush into this, my dear. A hasty acceptance would only serve to cheapen you. <laughs> so he knows, he knows what he's talking about. Oh, it's funny. I never knew until last Wednesday that I was a Virgo. <laughs> and he also said that my old man was Pisces, <laughs> which he is most nights because he gets in the way. <laughs> Um, anyway, I, I'm, I'm getting away from the point. The thing was, when I wouldn't get in this sailor's car, he pushed off, you see, and left me. I got no money in my bag. I spent a lot on Guinness before I met him. So I had two and a half hours to walk to Tutin Beck. <laughs> and of course, I, I sobered up a bit on the way home, you know. And uh, I got to just near where I live, and I thought, now. It's no good me charging in and having a scene with the old boy because all he will say is, where have you been, who have you been with, and how much have you managed to spend with you? <laughs> so I thought, what I'll do, I'll take all my clothes off downstairs <laughs> and I'll just slide up and creep in, you see, and if he says anything at all, I should just say I was watching the epilogue and I nodded up. <laughs> To which there is no answer. So, I get to the corner of my street, I take all my clothes off, I haven't got a stitch on, all in a bundle under my arm, and I'm up the staircase, everything in the garden's lovely, not a sound, you know. And I get to the top where it bends round, you know, and I've got the shock, and I was on top of a 29 bus. <laughs> Turn around 
pounds, you know, all sober. Oh, I hated them. You know, as if they'd never seen a woman with no clothes on on top of her bus before. So I, I just stood there, I thought I'd stare them out. I thought, let one of them make the first move. And one fella did. <laughs> Dirty, filthy beast. <laughs> Bless him. <laughs> and, and I came downstairs with as much dignity as I could master, because I stood near the Tom Dirt. And I must say, the conductor was very nice, little Irish fellow, wouldn't take any money, just kicked me off. <laughs> And I lay prostitute in the gutter. <laughs> I did, without a soul to care whether I lived, died, or filled in my pools or what. <laughs> and so I'm lying there, and all of a sudden I saw two legs encased in a blue uniform. And I thought to myself, now this is either a sailor or a copper, either way I'm sunk. <laughs> So I raised myself to me full five foot four, and there's this little blue bottle standing there, you know, only about 19, only been in the force five minutes, all his buttons shining. So he said, what are you doing down, you know, he spoke as if he'd been in the Oxford on a bus, he said, what are you doing down there? So I said, I was making a mistake and couldn't you part, do you want to get... <laughs> We've got a little comedian, have we? He said, he said, well, I think you'd better come and see the place where I work. <laughs> he didn't actually say that in those words, you know, but that was what he was on about. So um, we, I, I, went, I walked along beside him. I thought it was the best place as we were handcuffed. <laughs> and when we got there, I said, listen, I said, I, I'm a British object. I said, I demand my rights. I said, what is the charge? So he said, there's no charge, it's all free where we're going, you see. <laughs> oh, you can't win. And when we got there, I was clanging to a cell with a half a pound of straw and a nightlight and left. <laughs> and this morning he comes in, this fellow, all tarted up, you know, old spice on in his hair, all plastered down, and I sick. And, um, he, now this is what got me, he brought me in a cup of tea and two lumps, no spoon. <laughs> now you see, this is all thought out. They know jolly well, being a woman, you've nothing to stir it with. You see, they, they about that tennis. So he said, now, he said, we'll go up into number one court. So I said, I'm not playing bloody tennis this morning, you know. <laughs> he said, we're not playing tennis where we, and we didn't, Michael. We got up there, there's all these fellas sitting around, you know, in black things, and there's his uh, lordship halfway up the wallpaper. <laughs> looking like death, so he looked in his book, he spoke in capitals, he said, um, he said, it says here that last night you were drunk and incapable on top of a public convenience in <laughs> He said, is this so? So I said, well, drunk, yes sir, but I said, incapable, never, I can always raise the old gallop. He said, never mind about it. <laughs> He said, how do you plead? So I said, guilty but insane, sir. <laughs> so he said, well, as you're a woman, I'll take a lenient uh, view of this case. He said, go over in that box. And he said, let's hear your version of what went on last night. So, and he said, before you start, swear yourself in. <laughs> so I gave him a right mouthful. And, uh, <laughs> I 
I did my own defense. I was talking for 25 minutes. I don't know what I was doing. I, was, I did uh, four choruses of Walking Back to Happiness. <laughs> I did the mad scene from uh, Hamlet's Witches the Three. <laughs> and I finished up with uh, Will You All Won't You Bill Bailey. <laughs> And you know that judge got 25 years. <laughs> so it just shows you the pen is mightier than the gout board. <laughs> now I can't stop on rambling because there's all the other ladies and gentlemen that come on. I don't want to do too much. So can I just say thank you for having me and God bless and I'll see you again before very long. <laughs>